This video is sponsored by NOAA, an app I use to listen to articles from the world's leading financial publications. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a free trial and a special offer. If you've ever considered investing in Warren Buffett's holding company, Berkshire Hathaway, you've probably noticed something peculiar about the firm's Class A stock. The ticker, BRK.A, trades for over $400,000 a share, roughly half a million dollars for a single stock. This ticker is actually the most expensive stock in the world. And as you might imagine, it makes it pretty inaccessible to the average Joe. Now, Berkshire does actually have a class B share that trades for just a few hundred dollars. So in this case, there are other options available. But this issue of expensive stocks is something you'll run into with a lot of popular positions. Companies like Google and Amazon trade for thousands of dollars a share making it difficult for beginners to buy these companies while staying properly diversified. But a recent innovation, fractional shares, has come with a solution. Rather than buying a slice of the pie, why not buy a slice of the slice? Genius, right? But how exactly do fractional shares work? And is there a catch to this convenient capability? We'll answer these questions and more on today's Plain Bagel. While it's easy to get hung up on how much individual shares for a company cost, in truth, this dollar figure is pretty arbitrary. Whether a company decides to float 100 million shares for $50 a piece, or 1 million shares for $5,000 a piece, the overall value of the company is the same. But that's not to say the price doesn't matter. If the stock price is too high, it makes it harder for retail investors to own the company. It also makes diversification pretty tricky when dealing with individual stocks. If you only had $10,000 to invest and were looking to hold 30 different companies, you might struggle to do so if you were hoping to include some of the popular picks we mentioned earlier. Fortunately, there are a number of solutions to help investors tackle this sort of problem around expensive stocks. Mutual funds and ETFs, or exchange-traded funds, allow investors to pool their money together in order to achieve economies of scale while stock splits are a corporate action that a company can take to knock down their stock price without hurting investor returns. In 2020, for example, Tesla carried out a five for one stock split, dividing each of its units in five so that the unit price would be lower. But in cases where investors want to pick stocks themselves and where the company doesn't choose to do a stock split, brokerages have come up with another option to help investors buy expensive stocks, and that is the fractional share. The concept is, pretty simple. Rather than buying a single unit of a company for, say, $1,000, you could instead purchase half of the stock, or even a third, or a fifth, or a tenth of the position, allowing you to gain exposure to your favorite companies with very little money up front. And when I say very little money, I mean it. Some of these brokers allow you to buy fractional shares for as little as a dollar, making those high-priced positions a lot easier to get into. The great thing about this solution is that even though you aren't investing the same dollar amount into the stock as you would need to otherwise with whole units, you'll see the same relative return. Your fractional shares will experience the same percentage movements as the whole units, and any dividend will be paid out on a pro rata basis. If you buy one tenth of a stock, you will get one tenth of its dividend, meaning your yield will be the exact same as the whole unit. Now, interestingly enough, the fractional share has actually been around for quite a while but in the past, they've existed more as a technicality than something that was sought out. For example, investors have always been left with fractional shares when a company carries out a merger or stock split that involves an uneven conversion. As an example, a company may complete a three for two stock split, giving investors a third share for every two they already own. If an investor owned an odd number of shares, no worries, they'd be left with a fraction of a unit to ensure their interest in the company isn't diluted. Fractional shares have also historically resulted from DRIPS, or Dividend Reinvestment Plans, programs you can subscribe to that automatically reinvest your dividends back into the company. These almost always leave investors with fractional shares, since the dividends paid out by these positions rarely perfectly match the stock's price given that it fluctuates on the daily. So fractional shares are used to make up the difference and allow investors to fully invest their dividends that they receive without waiting to accumulate the full amount first. But the ability to buy fractional shares directly outside of a drip program is something we've only recently gained access to. In November of 2019, Interactive Brokers became the first major broker to allow its investors to trade fractional shares of virtually any US stock. 
And it was just recently that us Canadians gained the capability through Wealth Simple Trade. Now, the brokers that do offer fractional trading often only have a limited universe of stocks for you to choose from. But brokers do appear to be eager to expand the functionality. So we may see more of it in the future. But this all raises a good question. How exactly are brokers able to offer fractional trading to their clients? After all, stocks can't actually be split in half or further still, and then bought and sold on exchanges. They're only ever traded as whole units. Well, there are two methods through which the magic can happen. The first and more common approach is batch trading, where brokers simply accumulate fractional share orders throughout the day and carry out batch trades for whole units on exchanges with the purchased stocks and sale proceeds being split between the participating investors. While this approach makes the bookkeeping easier for brokers, it means that the broker will only execute your buy or your sell once they've accumulated enough fractional share orders for that batch trade, with the broker likely only submitting a couple of fractional share batch orders in a given day. But this is where the second method comes in, real-time trading. Here, the broker uses their own inventory of shares to execute client fractional share orders in real time, meaning when you submit the trade. In other words, they don't wait to accumulate fractional orders, but rather give you the shares you want directly, dealing with the leftover units in their own account. This eliminates that time lag that comes with batch orders. And while not yet as popular of an offering, more brokers will likely be looking to offer real-time fractional share trading in the near future. But regardless of the approach, fractional shares do seem to offer a number of benefits to investors. Outside of the fact that they've actually been demanded by the index fund industry for quite some time to help with more efficient rebalancing, fractional trading, as we've mentioned, makes it a lot easier for individuals to get into investing with individual stocks, as it allows users to better diversify between positions. If shares only cost a few dollars each, you can quickly build up a pretty well-rounded portfolio. This has also made it a lot easier to dollar cost average, where you invest your money into the market at regular intervals. While dollar cost averaging is a great practice when it comes to mutual funds and ETFs, it's always been a pretty clunky process for stock portfolios. If you're only putting aside a few hundred dollars a month, something most of us can only afford, you likely won't be able to buy every single position in your account to evenly increase your stock market exposure. And if you hold a stock like Google, for example, that costs a few thousand dollars, you may have to wait and accumulate funds before you're able to invest the amount. Something that kind of goes against the whole passive idea that underlies dollar cost averaging. But when you give an investor the ability to buy a whole portfolio of different stocks for under $100, dollar cost averaging suddenly becomes much more efficient. All this probably makes fractional share trading sound like quite the godsend. And indeed, it has arguably contributed towards the democratization of investing. But alas, as with most things in investments, there are unfortunately some drawbacks that are worth mentioning about the fractional share. Outside of the fact that investors often face limits regarding which companies they can invest in, especially when it comes to international stocks, there's often a time lag, as we mentioned, between when you place a fractional share order and when your broker actually executes the trade, if your broker does so through batch trading. Remember, brokers need to wait for other fractional share orders before they can submit a batch order, meaning that depending on how popular the stock is, it might take a while for your order to execute. So if you're hoping to time your trade and take advantage of some volatility, you may be out of luck if you're wanting fractional units. There's also a chance that you'll be charged a fee for trading fractional shares, especially if your broker offers real-time fractional trading. Because this functionality takes a bit more effort from the broker to offer, it usually doesn't come free. You may see an explicit or possibly even an implicit fee for the service. Brokers may charge you a premium on the stock price that you're buying, meaning you'll end up paying more for the stock than you would have paid on the open market. For example, if you were to buy one tenth of a stock that was selling for $100 on an exchange, you may pay more than $10 for that unit, with your broker pocketing the difference themselves. This is in addition to any other fee that the broker may charge, so it's important to research how your broker is compensated for trading fractional shares. You may also want to look into how the broker deals with voting rights. While some brokers do go through the effort of divvying up the control provided by a portion of a share, in other cases, you simply forfeit your voting right when dealing with fractional units. 
Fractional units also can't be transferred between brokerages, since the division of a fractional share is accounted for and balanced out at the brokerage level. This means that if you are wanting to change trading platforms, you'll likely have to sell your partial units to bring the rest of your investment over with you. This probably isn't a material detriment for most, but if the transfer forces you to realize a gain, it could have tax implications, so it's worth noting. Finally, in addition to all these shortcomings, there are some who believe that fractional shares actually encourage poor investing behaviors among retail traders. The thinking is that when it costs just a few dollars to invest in a company, investors may treat that investment with less diligence than they would a multi-thousand dollar position. This is actually the reasoning behind Berkshire Hathaway's expensive stock price. Buffett intentionally kept the price of his stock high to force investors to take the investment more seriously, something intended to help isolate the company from traders who might switch in and out of the position on the daily. Some also believe that fractional shares may encourage people to trade more frequently, and that fractional trading may encourage some beginners to put the cart before the horse regarding their finances. The thinking is that if you don't have enough money to buy a whole unit of a company's stock, chances are you haven't built up the investing experience needed to prudently select individual stocks anyway, and you may be better off going with a managed solution such as an ETF. It may also be a sign that there are other financial priorities you should be focusing on before hopping into the stock picking arena. While some may view investing as a golden ticket to the good life, in truth, most people are better served first addressing their savings strategy and budgeting. If you aren't on top of your finances, chances are you won't be as well equipped to keep your money invested in the market, something that will likely work against you. Now, while some of these points are a bit more debatable, it's for all these reasons, both the ones we know to be true and the possibilities, that it's probably best to stick with whole units whenever possible. But so long as you are fully informed and aware of the trade-off presented by fractional shares, they are a handy tool to have access to for when you're getting started. It really just comes down to being fully informed, both on the limitations of the security and how your brokerage makes money from the offering. So be sure to research your options if you're thinking of giving fractional trading a go. After all, while the functionality can improve your portfolio management, including its efficiency, you don't want to end up with a fractional return. Hey, you, yes you, tired of reading or catching up on the daily happenings with your eyes? Then you'll love Noah, today's sponsor. Why you might ask? Well, because they're an app that professionally narrates articles from big shot publishers in the finance world, like Bloomberg, The Economist, and Harvard Business Review, allowing you to listen to thought provoking pieces in the same way you might listen to a podcast. They have a wide array of subjects on their platform, from economics to the arts. And Noah actually curates article playlists known as series so that you get multiple perspectives on a given topic. Want to learn more about fractional shares? Great! There's a series titled Why Are Stockbrokers Allowing You to Trade for Free that goes over that subject and much more. It's a great service that makes it easy to keep the learning going while you tackle other things. Listen in while cleaning your house, walking the dog, realizing you don't own a dog, going to the pet store and buying a dog so that you can then walk it. All excellent pairings for Noah. Seriously, it's a cool service I personally find a lot of value in. And if you want to check it out, the first 100 people to visit newsoveraudio.com slash bagel or use coupon code PLAINBAGEL will get one week of the premium tier service for free, plus 37% off the annual subscription fee. So check out Noah. It supports the channel and they're a great app. I personally like them a lot.